everybody you know what time it is it's the shoe shine where friends from around the country get together on monday night to talk about the sweet science as we play monday morning quarterback or monday evening quarterback and we relive all the greatest fights of the weekend and the sport that we love so much the sport of boxing my name is dave from the four way coming to you from my studio in san jose here's my boy my boy as always my favorite co-host from the city of brotherly love and drew i don't think your uh, city is getting much love by the weather gods are you buried in snow or what's up got like 10 inches no you talking uh, you talking snow <laughs> Ooh, yep <laughs> all right enough joking enough joking uh we got something girls really DM me. <laughs> <laughs> you guys you, you girls can dm mr drew evo at drew evo but Drew, I want to talk to you about this, what we saw this Saturday night. Because, of course, in the sport of boxing, the whole world seems to evolve around Canelo Alvarez. And what we saw was Caleb Plant, the Caleb versus the Caleb showdown. Caleb Truax, who once beat Chunky DeGale, a former champion, is probably his biggest win. 37-year-old version of Caleb Truax. And it doesn't seem like the boxing community, social media, boxing, Twitter, what was impressed with Caleb Plant. So I'm dying to know what you think. But uh, we also got to cover that Joey Spencer fight because I'm really big on that hot prospect. Joey Spencer at 154 pounds. Kid was living in the Bay Area. I'm not sure if he still is, but um, what happened with him? That guy, Isaiah Selden. Drew, I just read that he, the guy, Isaiah Selden, uh, he was suspended. Drew, give me... Uh, it says here until at least March 31. And now if you guys watch that fight on PBC because it was free, there was some a series of those three rabbit punches behind the neck. And uh, those were pretty serious. And I was just talking with our boys at Leave It In The Ring Network earlier. I think you were in the room too. And I said, I wouldn't mind seeing a fine or a suspension or something. And it turns out he was. So that's really interesting enough. Also on the card was a guy uh, from Philadelphia, Darmani Rock, right? Yeah. <laughs> That turned out to be one of the better fights of the night against uh, heavyweight pros uh, prospect Coffee. So I want to know your thoughts on that. And of course, Plant versus Caleb Plant. Plant versus Caleb. Truax. 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 Caleb versus Caleb. That's the hot topic because 168-pound uh, division, which Canelo is trying to unify uh, all those belts, and it looks like he may be getting an opportunity to redeem himself when he turned away that contract last year or whatnot. Now he's all about it. Now he's talking about, I'm ready. I'm ready, right? Yeah. Um, Drew, I got a, a friend of that wants to call in, and it's a little thing I think we want to work on. So let me try making this outbound call real quick. Oh, hey, I um, want to say hello to people in the chat and everybody that's been following us uh, and helping us move over to YouTube as we move over there. Drew, uh, if you got anything you want to speak, I'm going to get this phone number real quick, and we will be calling well, somebody. You know that dude Sheldon is actually heavy, former heavyweight champion Bruce Sheldon's son, right? Yeah, that's a big deal, man, that he comes from that pedigree of a former champion, the lineage, his father, right? So yeah, that was a big deal on both parts, you know, um, his behavior in the ring and also his performance. And actually for Joey Spencer to knock out somebody like that, I thought that was really, really impressive. So, I mean, The way he did it was impressive. 
Yeah, and uh, he's been on a bit of a knockout uh, streak himself, that Joey Spencer kid. And it, at 20 years old, he seems to just be getting stronger and stronger. Um, there is a 154-pound championship fight coming up to Shara. Hello. Hey, so uh, welcome, everybody. Hey. To the shine. I've got a special feature tonight. It's called Confessions of a Casual. And on the phone with me is my buddy, a fellow Los Angeles comedian, by the name of Speech Impediment Man. You may have heard him on the Howard Stern Show. He's been a whack packer for over 20 years, and he's on tour with the uh, Anthony Cumia of Compound Media Comedy Tour, and he was just in Atlantic City. And he's got a bone to pick with my co-host, Mr. Drew Evo, because I believe Speech was telling me that he saw that fight because it was free. And you, what, what were you telling me, Speech, that you think Drew Evo is crazy, that Plant might beat Canelo Alvarez? Yeah, I, I think, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, that plan, uh, I mean, he beat that guy five punches to one, but I mean, any good fighter would have knocked him out. He's got to put some power behind that if he wants to move up. I mean... This guy that Plant fought, I, it seems that he was uh, just like a tomato can, a journeyman. He was hand-picked. Hand-picked journeyman? Tomato can, you call yeah. him? Yeah. How, how about an Uber driver? You, you have that one in your repertoire? Well, Uber, Uber driver, too. Probably. Well, there you yeah. go. And just so you I mean, can, now I know your credentials in comedy speech because I've, I've seen you work the comedy clubs, but talk to us about your boxing credentials. You've been watching boxing here and there for how long? I've been watching boxing forever. I mean, uh, Plank kind of reminds me of uh, Whitaker wow. in the 80s. I mean, a lot of punches, but no power. Wow. And uh, Drew, Drew says this guy wants to move up. I mean, uh, well, move up in competition is, and fight Canelo Alvarez, who is the big He wants winner. to move up. Is, I mean, he fought like fighters like Triple G. See, and now, I uh, mean, uh, wow, you're impressing me a little bit. You're supposed to be a cat. Now, how often do you watch boxing nowadays, Speech? Because now you are you're our first uh, casual fan here. Nah, I watch boxing every once in a while with Sean. All right, now let's have Drew. Let's give Drew a chance to have his um, report. Because you did a very impressive. I was very impressed by you as a casual fan. Now, you compared him to Whitaker. You said that he fought a tomato can, that he fought, uh, I said Uber driver, you said tomato can, journeyman, and somehow you're not convinced like Drew is. Drew, you still think that Plant is going to give Canelo Alvarez problems, and you're not alone. By the way, guys, if you didn't hear Andre Ward, uh, Oakland, California, gold medalist, champion, Hall of Famer, also thinks Plant might give Canelo. So, Drew, the floor is yours. So is this an every week thing that I get the all you other casual fan? I like it. I love it. I didn't think about it every week. But yes, uh, this week it is uh, Mr. Speech Impediment Man from the Howard Session. You get to argue with him. Speech, I got a lot of love for you, man. I really do, man. I really do. But I, I do not get half the shit you're saying right now. Like, I, I'm going to be honest with you. Did you know... The guy he fought, Caleb Truex, was a former IBF super middleweight champion who beat Roy, the top, for, the top, the, actually the best super middleweight in his time for that title, James DeGale? Well, let me ask you this. It doesn't matter what he was, plan beat this guy five punches to every one of his, and he could not knock him down. I but, mean, you think he's actually going to stand a chance against 
moving up against this guy. I mean, this guy fought Triple G. Can Ella fight Triple G? Yes. A tough Wish fighter. Which he lost to both times, yes. Well, arguably. Come on, continue. But I'm, I'm just saying, I mean, if you hit a guy five punches to one, I mean, you should be able to knock him out. Great now, point. we did knock him out, which leads me to believe he didn't have any power. Now, another thing I was just thinking, this was for a super middleweight title. I mean, that just says how bad that division is right now. Well, I, I mean, actually think it's very good. Up UFC fighters. <laughs> now, okay, right, Drew, I just want, I want, Drew, I really would like you to address a speech's uh, point that he made about the lack of power. Now, why didn't Plant finish the job and knock out the guy who he was clearly beating on every round? But oh, I'm, I'm the casual fan here wants to know, why did he not knock out Caleb Truex? So, so, so Dave, is he saying that Floyd Mayweather ain't good at all? Because he, he wasn't knocking people out late in his career? He mm. was winning clear-cut decisions? That's like, that's point. the problem with casual fans. They don't know the case of the sweet science. Oh, Caleb Plant demonstrated for twelve rounds the sweet science of boxing, which, which is what hit and not be hit to hit and not hit, hit. not be, be hit. hit combinations, special defense. Caleb Plant is a very good defensive fighter, and that's one of the main reasons why I think he has a great chance of beating Canelo Alvarez because he just has that type of defense that you can compare to Penel Whitaker, Floyd Mayweather. A little hmm. bit. He, okay. he can pump that jab twice, three times straight. That like, he'll do what Cal, what Calum Smith didn't do. Use his height as an advantage. Calum Smith tried to fight small against Canelo Alvarez, and he damn sure paid for it. That speech. So, I think he uh, brought up a very yeah. interesting point. Now he's telling, he's saying, wait, I know you clearly know who Floyd Mayweather is, but at the end of Floyd Mayweather's career. He did not have a successful knockout streak. He actually went the distance, uh, and he was unable to put right. away guys. He was unable to even put away a Pacquiao. So should you right. cut this guy, Caleb Plant, a little bit of slack that he wasn't able to knock him out? I mean, he did win. Should we cut him slack? Well, he won, but, I mean, if you beat a guy five punches to one... He I mean, you pretty much outclass the guy, and it's just a matter of time uh -huh. that you should be able to knock him out. Uh-huh. It's just a matter of time before you knock him out. So, you if I'm getting this right, wanna... if I'm getting this right, Drew, our, our guest tonight, Mr. Speech and Pettiman, Man, the casual fan, the first casual fan of the series, is saying that at some point, he should have been able to finish the job. And he's disappointed by the, uh, the lack of aggression, the lack of the killer instinct. Is that what you're saying, Speech? Yes. And, I mean, you're talking about him moving up to uh, a super fight with guy, Canelo. Alvarez that mm -hmm. he's going to fight. Yep. Is, he's been in war. I mean, this Plant guy, I mean, he needs to work out some more. I mean, he has to bring some power behind that. I mean, and this fight was for a title. I mean, that just showed what a poor state that division is in. I mean, it's like, I mean, you're the home run king of Little League Baseball. Now but, that, I mean, when uh -huh. you move up to the majors, you're going to get struck out. Now, now you bring up another good point. When you move up to the majors, this was primetime television on free TV. Now, the people in the 70s and 80s who had a chance to do that, like Muhammad Ali, these great fights in the 70s and 80s on CBS, you knew that you had to impress the general public 
And you still say you were right. disappointed. You were disappointed, but you also said that it needs to work out. But on another hand, you also said that the 168 pound division is weak. And Drew, we know that that, as as hardcore boxing fans, we know that that is mumbo jumbo, right? All right, speech. You should be honored because yeah. you are the first of many casual fans that's going to get conquered by me in this shit. I think that he's doing good. He is, but he's the first of many casual fans that will be conquered by me on this show. <laughs> and he should be honored. <laughs> he but should we, be honored that he's the first of many. But, but I can't wait to put this show on YouTube and <laughs> let the people, let the fans in the comments. Remember, we're moving to YouTube. So make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel for the shoe shine. I'm going to put that up on our Twitter and let the fans decide, like, subscribe, and put it in the comments who you think won this. Drew, your closing argument before I interrupt you anymore. Your closing argument. A lot of fighters have good chins. Truex has a good chin. He might have got easily outclassed by a much better fighter, which slick fighter. And the, and the problem is, this is what people look like. Oh, as long as you're good, casuals look at it like this. As long as you're good, if you're really good, you should knock a guy out. That's necessary. Like, Floyd Mayweather couldn't knock nobody out late in his career. He outclassed them, defense, hit not to be hit. Like, it's just so many different things that Caleb Plant can do. And Caleb Plant, if he hits you enough, he can knock you out. Or get a stoppage. True X just had a good chin that night. But the but the wow. is uh, I, 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 I get my last I get my last argument. I'm not finished. Okay. <laughs> there are five guys I believe that can beat Canelo Alvarez. Caleb Plant, Billy Joe Sanders, Jamal Charlo, Demetrius Andre, and David Benavides. They are the five guys that can possibly be Canelo Alvarez that are most likely, one of them is most likely able to be Canelo Alvarez. And the thing is, that fight, that fighter may have, may be Billy Joe Sanders that's just going to fight him Cinco de Mayo. There's a good chance that people are really not giving Billy Joe Sanders a chance at all to be Canelo Alvarez, but him and Caleb Plant or possibly out of these five, the worst matchups for Canelo because Caleb Plant reminds you more of that law maxer, which he lost that fight. He was get the decision. Billy Joe Sanders is the same thing. Slifty boxers, they're gonna outbox him all night. I think Billy Joe is a is a softball. Even worse for Canelo because soft, because Canelo had problems with softballs. Well, and let me ask Speech thing, something. Speech, do you know any of the guys that uh, Drew is talking to you about? <laughs> Billy Sanders and uh, and and. Uh, no, no, I, I'm, I'm just saying. I mean, this guy Plant, if he's gonna move up against Alvarez, I mean, he's got a long ways. I mean, this guy Alvarez has been in, in war. Against Triple G, he's a tough Mexican fighter. That's right. I mean, I I just don't see it. I mean, this plan does not have the power to go up against this Alvarez. I mean, I I just don't see it. Right, right. And what what, what do you think about Plant versus Joey Biden? Speech? I don't know who this Joey Biden is. <laughs> yeah. I'm a That's casual okay. fan. Thank you. Casual fan, Mr. Speech Impediment Man. I really appreciate Speech calling our buddy. Speech, don't pee on me. I got you up there and your famous Superman. Now, how was your trip That's to Atlantic right. City? How was the trip to Atlantic City? Because I want you to plug where you're going to be next. It was good. I'm. I'm... It was great. I had a good time. I'm leaving for Phoenix, Arizona. I got a show Wednesday night in Gilbert, Arizona. And then I'm going to be on Kill Tony at Stand Up Live in Phoenix, Arizona. Now, Kill Tony uh, is Thursday huge. Thursday and Friday. 
Kill Tony is humongous on YouTube. It's probably one of the top comedy shows on YouTube, and I hope yeah. they, I hope they're covering you know, it live. And I had uh, a good idea for his slogan. Oh yeah, don't pee that? on me. Yeah, we should ch- take the "Don't pee on me" out, and yeah. just instead of pee on me, don't all Kelly on me. Don't R. Kelly on me. I don't know. If <laughs> speak, was that funny? <laughs> oh, he likes it. <laughs> That'd be a good one, dude. That'd be a oh, good one. Oh wow, he likes your joke. I I, I thought that I would just that'd be a good one. Speech. I thought I, I like would take that. out "don't" and just leave "p" on me. There you go. Oh, that didn't get. That, I guess that there didn't do so well. Go. All right, speech. I appreciate you having uh being on our show and being our first confession of a casual boxing fan. And I look forward to talking yeah. to you this weekend and have a great gig. Break a leg, as they say. I'll talk okay. to you later, speech. Bye bye. Thank. Bye. So that was fun. That was fun. hey. You got to make a material for one thing. We need to separate ourselves from the great pack that we're rolling with, and I'm talking about the guys that leave it in the ring network because everybody's doing such a great uh, job, getting great interviews and whatnot. But Drew, I started off doing comedy podcasts, so I've got to call my rolodex of friends, <laughs> whether or not they're boxers or not. But I thought you did that pretty good, man. I appreciate that. So. Caleb Plant. Hey, Force the many. <laughs> Caleb, K- Caleb Plant, in your opinion, has a chance. And I, I want to let people know, I did read this article. Andre Ward is big. He sees something, that Caleb Plant has a chance against Canelo. It definitely looks like this fight is going to happen in September. Um, Canelo's got that fight with Billy Joe Saunders practically done for Cinco de Mayo. And then he's a free agent. He can go wherever he wants. And the big fights are probably going to be against those PBC guys. What do you think about him facing Plant and not Benavides? Tell, tell you the truth, if if he has his deal with Eddie Hearn, I think the last fight of his deal should be against Demetrius Andre because Demetrius Andre is part of matchroom. Demetri- Here's the problem. Eddie Hearn... Needs hasn't been able to land a big fight for Demetrius Andre since he joined Max Matchroom Boxing. Demetrius Andre has called out Canelo on multiple occasions. And this is a fight that had to be made. He's talking about making him versus Triple G. Why? Let him, it, Demetrius Andre would destroy Triple G easily. Yeah, and it just, I, I'm it, seeing it's that he's easy. in negotiation to fi- have a fight at 160, Demetrius Sandrati, and it does not include Canelo anywhere in that conversation. Uh, nobody right. wants to fight him. I mean, is it an insult? Is it uh, because there's something they're afraid of? I kind of see Boo Boo Andrade and and Billy Joe in the same in the same shoes, you know. I mean, slick guys that. Well, if you want to compare the matchup. And Andre is the matchup Canelo doesn't want. A softball that's crafty, excellent boxer. This is the ma- if you're gonna compare Andre, you're gonna compare him to the Laura matchup. A softball that gave a lot of problems to Canelo Alvarez. And this is a fight that Andre can, pace, can possibly easily outbox Canelo and easily win this fight. But it really depends on the boxing media. Because a lot of the boxing media are going to try to talk everybody, the fans out of this fight. Because they don't want the cast cow getting beat by a fighter like Andre and everything. They don't want a fighter like Charlo to beat the cast cow Canelo. Like, it's a lot of poly- it's a lot of biased crap in boxing today. And it's go- and it's, and it's always biased crap in boxing. But... This is the dude. If you're gonna, if you gonna, if you're gonna have three guys, Caleb Plant, Billy Joe Sanders, and, and Demetrius Andre, and you and I'm gonna have to pick one that I really gonna put my money on to beat Canelo Alvarez. It's gonna be Demetrius Andre. Hundred hmm, percent. Yeah. Going, I think, going back to Billy Joe Saunders though, I read something today that Tyson Fury is in his camp, saying Canelo's never fought a gypsy. So Tyson Fury the heavyweight champion of the world seems to see something in not his fellow countryman, but a, a fellow gypsy traveler that uh, may upset Canelo Alvarez. Irish baby. <laughs> uh, they're Irish travelers living in, in the UK. Right, right, right. So again, it looks like that fight is going to happen. You brought up Charlo. 
Charlo's been in the conversation a lot, and also David Benavides has been in the conversation a lot because I don't know if you if we if you saw the interview that our friends David at Leave It in the Ring had with David Benavides's father. David Benavides apparently offered their camp offered Berlanga the hottest prospect of 2020 with top rank at 168 pounds. The knockout artist Puerto Rican Berlanga is ready to offer him a contract to fight, but Berlanga's people came back supposedly and said he's not ready for that fight your thoughts on that you say you're not ready for a fight but you're trying to call out like the lights of canelo and everything that's just that just tells me one thing you're calling out canelo because you want a payday you don't care if you will lose a fight that's the problem with boxes man they a go big payday they the go and payday. they see that Big payday, that possibly the biggest payday he's gonna have. I don't care if I get my ass kicked. I'm getting paid to take my to get my ass whooped. You, even if it's early in your career, that might that might be yeah. the case. But problem is this Belanga fight. He this Belanga guy. He hasn't really shown anything. Yo, oh, he's a knockout puncher, but he hasn't moved up in competition yet. So I don't I don't even I don't care too much for this guy until he actually beats a top ten guy. And it does it convincingly. So, uh, speaking of Berlanga, this was featured in Boxing <coughs> News BoxingNews24.com today that Berlanga on Saturday, Berlanga, sent a message to Caleb Plant because that is a guy he's interested in fighting and let him know that's something he'd like to... Edgar Berlanga, Twitter, says, That fight was cute. Let me know when you're ready to get kissed by these fists. So... He's calling out Caleb Plant. Why is everybody all of a sudden after Saturday night eyeing Caleb Plant, the IBF champion? Now everybody seems to think, is it because they weren't impressed either? Like speech impediment, man? That's the problem. They think, oh, because this guy ain't knocking people out. They think, they think that, he's, that they can get that he's too sweet. But that's the problem with people like Bolanga. Like, a guy like Bolanga is going to get destroyed Boxing. He's going to get the sweet science right in front row seat to the sweet science of boxing because this dude is actually asking somebody, please just hit me all night long and make me look bad. And it's going to be a lot worse than getting knocked out in the first round. I can tell you that right now. Like a guy like Plank that's going to be willing to hit him at the whole night. Easily and not and embarrass this kid and this dude ain't gonna be able to do nothing and hit him. That's what's gonna happen. Belanga is a is a guy that wants to get you out of there quickly. He ain't he ain't got nothing on plant. Uh, like I said, this dude needs to just go and move up in competition and just go where his promoters are saying and his management team is saying stop trying to call out these big guys right now until you actually beat a top fighter. So. Speech. Our, our, our guest, uh, our guest earlier of the casual fan segment, and he was saying that the 168 pound division is nothing to brag about or whatnot because he, he doesn't know, right? Of course, he's a casual fan. But um, our my buddy Ranger over at Raw Boxing TV, who's been our co-host, uh, special guest co-host twice in January, interviewed David Morrell, a Cuban fighter who's fought on PBC, and I think you may remember he fought recently, like less, maybe a month ago. David Morrell at 168 pounds, a Cuban, uh, a Cuban fighter from the Cuban system who's fled and fighting out on PBC <coughs> now. To me, because I've been watching and listening to everybody's take on the 168-pound division, but I'm telling you, Drew, I see something special in David Morrell where Berlanga was prospect of the year at 168, but I think David Morrell, you're talking about boxing, and of course Plant, Plant was, I mean, he, he does get credit for being a superior boxer, but the question is whether or not Plant is going to have enough in his arsenal to outpoint Canelo because it doesn't look like he's going to beat him uh, via power or via knockout. But this kid, David Morrell, Cuban fighter that Raw Boxing interviewed, I think that guy can easily possibly outbox Berlanga. Uh, he is at PBC, so that fight's unlikely to happen. But Berlanga is a... Berlanga, and David Morrell are 168-pound prospects that are definitely going to be putting their names out there this year and making loud statements. As it, as it looks right now, it looks like Canelo's not going to fight David Benavides. That's not even someone he is eyeing this year. 
But let's just remind everybody that David Benavides has no title because he lost his titles twice for a lack, whatever you want to call it, a lack of discipline, one time for cocaine, for the use of cocaine in his system, and the other time for missing weight. And that's that's the one, that's the messed up that's the messed up part. All right, he missed weight, but that should at least give that should at least put him in the in the picture of at least getting a, a next shot or two against Canelo. Like he's fighting this nobody. But, this but what belt did he lose? And you're big on this. He lost a WBC belt. He lost the WBC belt, which Canelo has, and he's defend and he's fighting a WBC mandatory that doesn't even. Deserve to be the mandatory because he's come off of a, a knockout loss to Anthony Duell, and Anthony Duell is number four in the ranking in the WBC. That's a joke. It's always been the WBC has been a joke, and I think the WBC favors Canelo a lot because it's a cash cow. As they favored Chavez Jr. in the past. Yes. So, it like to be honest, if you're going. Benavides should at least be in the talks of being um, at least have an opportunity to get his belt back as a mandatory. At least if you're going if you're going to make him fight somebody to take that mandatory ship, okay, get he's already beaten Anthony Durrell. So he's already beat like he's possibly could beat this guy that's gonna fight Canelo next easily. Mm-hmm. So like, I think this is a fight Canelo's avoiding because he sees for now because he sees he's a young hungry champion. He was a young fighter that can possibly cause Canelo problems. I think so. But but uh, these, let's but, remember Benavidez where the criticism I have of his plan is that it doesn't seem he has that killer instinct. That's something I don't doubt that David Benavides has. He's still continuing to finish people in his most recent fight. He puts the finishing act on people, but he doesn't have the belt, right? Now, I heard this week that Charlo wants some of David Benavides, that Charlo is considering a big fight with him at 168 in-house at PBC. I like it. Now, that most likely can happen, and I do, I'll tell you the truth, I would will, I will love to see that fight. It's an easy fight to be made. I don't think there'll be a problem. They both want the fight. Uh, Charlo is willing to move to 168, possibly vacating his belt. Right. Maybe if he decides to go to 168, maybe campaign at 168. Some some people on that roundtable that we participate, the Leave It in the Ring roundtable, said that he got a lot of unfinished business at 160. But I'm saying, hey, how do you fault the fighter who's willing to challenge himself? Like Teofimo Lopez saying, give me the best at 140. I'll fight for the belt at 140. I can't fault the Charlo for saying I'll fight one of the best at 168. I'm gonna I'm gonna disagree with those with the round table because how can you say he has unfinished business if Triple G won't fight him? It's not like and, Triple G's knocking on Charlo's door. You're right about that. And the thing is And I don't like this, that fight for Triple G, to be honest. And we we all know that there's not gonna be a Demetrius Andre Charlo fight. Like Oh, and they've been chasing each other for years. Demetrius Andre, he's been chasing those guys down in, like, in the halls of the <laughs> stadium. The biggest fight, the big fight in 160 is Charlo versus Triple G. And that's not going to happen because Triple G is going to avoid him. And like Eddie Hall is not going to work with PBC to, to make this fight happen. It's just, well, how can we call it unfinished business well, when he's trying to seek the fight but the fighter, but the other team isn't trying to. That's not that's not unfinished business. That's him trying to complete his business. They were not a part of it, so there's nothing really else for me to do but find somebody that wants me, and I'll go if you have to move up. And apparently, David Benavidez wants me, and I'm gonna fight him. And that that's how it is. That's what he's going with. That. If I can, if you're not gonna fight me, and you're the, actually the last middleweight that I really have to beat in this division, screw it. I just move up and, and campaign at 168. There's a whole bunch of fighters I can fight, and one of them is in my stable. So it's a it's a good fight. 
actually, it could be a great fight at the end of the day. It, it really did. It, it really could be a great fight. But to say it's unfinished business, I completely disagree because he wants it. Triple G doesn't want it. So I believe that if you want to say unfinished business, say unfinished business on Triple G's end because this is types of fights that he needs now because the only two people in that division is Andre and Charlo unless he wants to go that wow, of a Dora Chanko we mantras, I doubt that's going to happen and anything. So, it's not really much more to do for Triple G. Triple G should do the same route, move to 168. There's really nobody at 160 unless he wants to... Uh, he may he, fight Jaime Munhia this year, which I think it would be a very good fight for him uh, at the zone. It's, I mean, it's kind of a medium risk fight. It's going to be all action. And that fight was going to be made years ago. The sanctioning bodies, I believe, said no way. This kid, Jaime Munhia, wasn't even known. He wasn't even on the radar yet. Jaime was willing to take the fight. They didn't allow the fight to happen. But we know now Jaime was a former champ at 154. He's moved up. He's been in a couple big fights at 160. I won't hate on that fight as a Mexican-American and a fan of Mexican boxing. I'm not going to hate on that fan, Drew. But I really want to pivot. Go ahead. I want to... I want to comment on I want to comment on uh, Brian's comment uh, tr- tr- Canelo versus Triple G three. I, that's a fight I don't want to see. I don't want to see. He's been wild trying somebody against Canelo. I don't want to see it again. Uh, shout He's, out to Brian Cloud Brian Clowder in the room, uh, an old time friend here. I appreciate him being in the room. But there's still yeah. a lot of people that want to see that fight. Still a lot of people. And I just saw it's some ca- rumors. It's a lot of casuals. It's a lot of casuals that want to see that fight. Well, That's they're the very important. Whether they're casual or they tune in. or there's, there's always people that are in between casual and hardcore fans that don't sit by the TV and watch boxing every weekend. But they, they, know, they know plenty, right? And there's room for all of those people in the, in the sport. And, uh, and, and I think we need them. But um, there's still a lot of people that want to see that fight. Drew, let's pivot because our last show last week with uh, Ranger... We talked about how we, we brought in the MMA element, how Conor McGregor, McGregor lost this big opportunity to fight Pacquiao. And all of the sudden, Manny Pacquiao, the 147-pound division, has been put into a whirlwind with all kinds of crazy stuff. Tell, tell me, remind me what happened to Manny Pacquiao this week with his title. Well... He got the he got stripped of the regular cha- WBA title because apparently if you you have s- six months to defend that title, you at least have to be in negotiations and be close to making a fight within six months. Unfortunately, Manny Pacquiao hasn't fought in two years, so right now Against they got they, yeah, so they have to they stripped him of the title. Of the regular title, they named the champion recess. So apparently, the champion recess means when you decide you want to go for that title, that regular title belt again, you automatically get a fight against with who that though? champion. This is important because this guy's been overlooked. Now, he's a PBC welterweight, and he's been overlooked by a lot of the top welterweights. And we know that he's tough as hell; could be a problem for anybody. Yeah, and the, the like. Apparently, the interim WBA champion is Ugas. Yeah, Cuban fighter. Cuban fighter. And Ugas is known... His best fight was against Sean Porter. He lost a split decision fight to Sean Porter. A a very close fight. Very close fight. I actually had Ugas winning that fight. Thank you. A lot lot of people did have Ugas. I I picked Ugas. I picked... I had Ugas winning that fight slightly. But he's going to be awarded... The regular championship, he's now recognized as the WBA Waterweight Champion. So now, there's gonna be. I think Or Spence is gonna try to to get him the fight on, just so he can unify the get right. another belt. And they're all at PBC, but, she, but it definitely shook up that division because now all of a sudden people who didn't want to fight each other may be forced to fight each other if they want that title. It's it's shaking up a lot of things now. Or Spence. The and Terrence Crawford, they gotta look at it like this. There's no title in a lot. There's no. You're not gonna win a title beating Manny Pacquiao anymore. You're gonna get that big win. You're gonna get the big payday, and you're gonna get the big payday. Big payday, but you're not gonna get that belt to add to your collection. 
Right. If right. you beat B Pacquiao, because I thought one, I think one of them will lose to Pacquiao before these two fight each other. But Manel is apparently that rumors are going around that Floyd has offered me Pacquiao a rematch since his del- his fight with Logan Paul exhibition fight is delayed again. And also, what we covered last time on the Shoe Shine is that Ryan Garcia, the young social media star, the instantly was brought into the conversation of having a legitimate fight with the, with Manny Pacquiao. What influence did the WBA have when they started to see that Ryan Gar- This is January 28th, Boxing News 24. Ryan Garcia's advisors say the Pacquiao fight is going to happen April 24th or May 1st. Now all of a sudden, and they were at first last time we were on the show together, we were talking about it being an exhibition for Manny Pacquiao, an exhibition with two professional boxers. The last time I read something, they were saying Ryan Garcia was asking Manny Pacquiao, the legend, to come down and wait for him. Who? who to 143? Apparently, it's all falling apart because now I'm just days later. Apparently, this is up in the wind now. Because, because actually, this, this wasn't going to be an exhibition. exhibition. That, like, because, because a lot, lot of backlash... backlash that, that the, when, when the fight, fight was going to be an exhibition, this was a lot of backlash. Like, Haney and, and Tank Davis, they didn't want nothing to do with Ryan Garcia after this. But when, they, when Ryan Garcia's people wanted Manny Pacquiao to go down four pounds to fight Ryan Garcia, he was like, why? You, I'm the bigger name. I'm the legend. I'm the eighth division war champion. And suddenly Floyd sees an opening again. Floyd's been training. Yeah. Floyd's been training. He sees an opportunity. About, man, he doesn't have the belt anymore. If anybody deserves a rematch, a money-making payday, it's these two great legends, right? Yeah, so, so now, like, we, we can, can hope, hope that, that fight happens, happens but, but to tell you the truth, Ryan Garcia, he, 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 like, he really just made, like, a lot of, like, even though the casual fans love him anything, but a lot of hardcore boxing fans are really gonna, are shaking their head, uh, shaking their heads, scratching their heads at this dude because you really were gonna take an exhibition fight with an active fighter. But also, like, he wasn't confident in beating Manny at his natural weight now. He was asking Manny, this, he was asking Manny to come down. That, that says a lot about someone who's not a champion. Yeah. And I'm going to be honest, Manny Pacquiao beat, I think Manny Pacquiao will easily beat Ryan Garcia. At right 143? Any, at a, if he at any way. 143, 143, 140, yeah. 147. It's not a big stretch Manny for Pacquiao, Pacquiao to come down three pounds. The Twilight Manny Pacquiao will beat Ryan Garcia right now because Ryan Garcia is so flat footed. He has his chin out. He's he's my opinion, the Mexican American. He's gonna get fully exposed by Manny Pacquiao. And that's that they this should have even been discussed with these two. They Oscar should have looked at him and said, yo, dude, don't don't even try to do an exhibition with him. He's gonna expose you and these guys are gonna pick up on it and whoop your ass. And he's easily going to be exposed by Pacquiao. So, Drew, and he's going to be exposed by Pacquiao. But it doesn't look like this fight is going to happen. Well, at least not now. It's hard to keep up. Right? Thank God. Thank God. The real champion at 135 pounds is Teofimo Lopez. He's a unified champion. He had the, one of the biggest fights, biggest win of 2020, uh, beating Lomachenko. Pound for pound, great. And Teofimo Lopez has finally come out and made a statement because... Real boxing fans know that he's at the top of the 135 food chain. And he came out with a statement this week and he said, quote, stop this YouTuber boxing. Stop diminishing the sport that we've worked so hard for. Shit not sweet, said Teofimo Lopez on Twitter. This, it had to be a professional boxer, an active professional that everybody knows that had to come out and say this. Because this is going on... This YouTuber shit has been going on long enough in boxing. That these YouTubers thinking boxing is so sweet. They're going to fight each other at 
head gear, gear and then they're going to fight each other about it. And then Jake Paul's going to say, oh, I'm taking this seriously. I'm 2-0. But you didn't fight a boxer yet, dude. You fought a Italian basketball player and a freaking nobody. So Floyd talking to Pacquiao, the last things we've heard is that this Floyd uh, fight with uh, – and, and Logan Paul is possibly not going to happen now or be postponed Thank indefinitely, uh, which brings up that whole thing we were talking about, that now he's chasing a Manny Pacquiao rematch that could make him just as much money, possibly more than this Logan Paul circus sacked. Um, and now we know how this young champion, Teofimo Lopez, feels about it. But did you know that Bob Arum today of Top Rank Entertainment says, you know what, I'd like to see... Teofimo Lopez versus Ryan Garcia, 2021. And, and you know my, I'm going to tell you my prediction already. Sure. Teofimo, Lope, Teofimo Lopez knocks out Ryan Garcia. But I like, round, I, round, well, I like that prediction. Six. You're going to get a lot, we're going to get a lot of hate mail on that, but I like that prediction because I'm a big round, fan of Teofimo. Round six. The fight is, the fight, the conversation has just begun. And I think Ryan Garcia should absolutely be jumping on that. He should be jumping on it even faster than he wants to fight um, Trevante Davis. Because Teofimo Lopez is a huge star in his own right. That fight he had on free TV was one of the biggest rated Nielsen ratings for television in 2020. Offered on free TV. A, a unification fight. Um, I think that's a great idea. I'm, I'm curious as to what the motive is. But hey, I'm, I'm all for that fight. So with that being said, Drew, February, this is our first show of February. We're going to be bringing on guest commentators, guest co-hosts, uh, a whole slew of guys that we've met that I think would be great additions. We're on the Leave It In The Ring network. We're moving to YouTube. Shout out to everyone at Leave It In The Ring. Remember to go over there on anywhere you get your uh, podcast, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, um, Pandora has our show streaming. And, uh, and look for the shoe shine on YouTube. Because uh, we are moving our show there, and I definitely want to get more interaction with people in the chat, like everyone else is doing. Man, I'm I'm really looking forward to that. But so you know, Drew, February is the return of Adrian Broner, so we're gonna have a lot to talk about. <laughs> they can, man. Anybody can get it. <laughs> I mean, like we're talking like uh, in just two weeks, Valentine's Day weekend. The can man can uh, the return, whether he loses or wins, the or uh, the opponent. It's going to most definitely be entertaining. So your final thoughts, Drew? And I know you're snowed in right now. Oh, man. I got to go to work tomorrow night, so I'm not looking forward to it. <laughs> so let's look at it like this. Tonight was the first of many casual boxing fans to be oh, conquered yeah, yeah. by me. That's, that should be the name of it. Being Drew, Drew casual Conquers, is being casual conquered. <laughs> nah, Drew, casual is being conquered by Drew. Again, I would like to know if anybody wants to go ahead and comment, send me a DM. That's my Twitter handle right there. And let me know what you thought of Drew's performance against a casual fan. And the casual fan is a comedian, by the way. So he, uh, so be gentle. Yeah, I, I was as gentle as possible. <laughs> 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 but now at the at the end of the day, you know, it's thank God we didn't talk about that. Walk heavyweight that much because like god damn that dude just did not go ahead and, and we, we got one song left here coffee versus dermani rock is coffee gonna be a player you know what i, I have to see more of them I, I can't really comment on that because walk was way out of shape beyond out of shape yeah and oh. he, and, and walk was really he kept his hands down a lot kind of looked like andy it, ruiz and this was this kid has a pedigree, amateur pedigree, and I don't That's understand. Nothing. You want to talk why about out of shape? There's a guy. No. There's a guy that's going viral on Twitter uh, from Tijuana, and his name is El Torta. A torta in Mexico is a, uh, and they have it all over California and Southwest states. It's like a really delicious grilled Mexican sandwich, you know, on a like toasted bread and whatnot, and they melt the meat and the cheese. He's named the Torta, and I'm telling you, he may be the next Andy Ruiz, El Torta. 
a very interesting heavyweight prospect that's coming out of Mexico that I saw fight. Also this weekend, by the way, shout out to Fernando Vargas from Las Vegas. Of course, you know, a legendary boxer. His Both of his two oldest sons uh, have turned professional. And this weekend, his middle son, Amato, won his first professional fight in Mexico. So now both of his two oldest sons are professional boxers. And everybody's looking for interviews uh, with him and his children because... It's the future. The Vargas family mate is looks like he's gonna have a future in professional boxing. These kids, one of these, one of his kids, his three kids may one day be a world champion and follow in their father's footsteps. Very interesting. But um, one last thing, Drew. Yesterday I had a chance on Raw Boxing TV. Um, he had Frank Sanchez. Frank Sanchez is a Cuban heavyweight that trains in Canelo Alvarez's camp. We saw him fight recently. He knocked out that tall Mexican guy, six foot four, Julian. I believe that was on PBC. I had a great, great interview and a great question for him. So please go check out Raw Boxing uh, TV on YouTube's interview with Frank Sanchez. I think I made him and uh, the, the host laugh quite a bit on that on that show because I think my question threw them for a loop, but you'll have to check that out, man. So we'll, we'll check you guys all out next Monday. Drew, I forgot. I'll probably cut you off. <laughs> what were you going to say, buddy? I forget. <laughs> oh, man. All right. I'm Dave from the 408. It's my boy Drew Evo. It's the Shoe Shine on Periscope YouTube. The podcast is available for download on Pandora, Stitcher, iTunes, Podbean, wherever you get your podcast at. And we'll check you guys out next week, next Monday. Peace. <laughs>